So if you want to buy real estate, you probably have thought about buying multi-unit properties in San Diego, which are few and far between, but we've helped a lot of people do this. And here today to join us is Max Ventura. How are you doing, buddy? Great. Thanks group. for having me, Derek. Good, yeah, thank good you. Good to have you, brother. Now, I know this is something that you really specialize in. You talk to a lot of people about multi-unit properties. Um, you know, <laughs> is this something, is it, a, is it a pipe dream? I mean, can, can this really happen? Are there really any of these for sale out there? They're, yeah, they're, they are for sale. Um, inventory is low, as we know. Right. Um, countywide, two to four units specifically. We're at, I just checked this morning, uh, 184 units total. 184 now, is not bad. That's within the, whole, the entire county. Yeah. You shrink that down to San Diego City, uh, we're down to 117. Okay. So relative to the San Diego market, we're at uh, 2,700 active listings right now, residential. So when you take that down, you know, we're a little over 100. It's, it's, it's pretty scarce. Yeah. Inventory's tight. Yeah, inventory's tight for sure. And it's tight all the way around. Well, I did, you know, there are opportunities though, right? Like I saw one recently, a friend of mine had one listed. It was a two unit, one bed, one bath for each unit. Listed for 449. And you know what's crazy? It needed work. It needed work for sure. Wasn't in a, you know, a 10 out of 10 uh, school neighborhood, but uh, they ended up selling for 425. Mm. Isn't that interesting? So it's like, I, and I, and I couldn't believe it when I heard it. So there are opportunities, you know, for just about every price point, if you're patient enough, if you stay after it enough, and if you have a good plan, right? So like, how would you advise someone who comes to you, because I know this happens all the time, um, who says like, Max, I wanna buy multi-units. Like, how do I figure this out? Well, you have to study and you have to get with, you know, a realtor that understands the market, that understands the two to four unit market specifically. It's kind of this gray area where these properties are not often or as often as they should be treated as income producing properties, investment properties, like you would see on your five units and above, right? So the commercial side. On the commercial side, right. Yeah. So right. right on the MLS, you know, there's a few extra data points that surprisingly are not mandatory fields by the listing agent that's inputting these. Hmm. And you have just basic basic um, investor equations, cap rate, GRM, gross rent multiplier, you're inputting what the actual income is, the expenses for the year, if the properties are vacant, et cetera. It's very basic. And oftentimes this data is either not input at all, it's input incorrectly. So there can be a lot of opportunity in this specific niche, the two to four unit space, because it's still considered residential. So is what you're saying that um, basically a lot of the listings out there, whoever has the listing, the agent that has the listing, may not be familiar with, you know, the, the concept of treating this like it's a commercial investment opportunity. But if you have that commercial investment experience, you know how to essentially evaluate it, and therefore they may be missing the mark on what the actual value is. Is that what you're kind of That's saying? That's exactly it. Because, you know, there's 30,000 real estate agents in San Diego County and you know, when we go to school, which is again, very brief, you can come out with your, with your license in six months for not that much money, mm -hmm. where there's virtually no ceiling, you know, we're learning how to help people buy, how to help people sell, but they don't spend any time on the investment side. So it's a whole nother skill set that mm. is not taught to us unless you go out and seek. Seek and you shall find. So we have to be able to separate ourselves from you know, the other 30,000 in the industry and, as, you, as we all have heard, the, the riches are in the niches. So you have to specialize in something. Agreed. And um, the two to four unit space is, is very appealing in that sense because it really is all about finding other people's mistakes. And they're pretty common just on the active market. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about finding other people's mistakes. Save that clip. Um, <laughs> it's so true. But I mean, it's, it's out in the open though is what you're saying. So it's right there in the listing. You can evaluate very quickly whether, okay, this listing agent knows what they're doing selling this property. And I would highly encourage you, if you're selling a multi-unit property, make sure you're working with someone like Max who actually knows how this stuff works so that you don't become essentially the prey in that right. situation. Um, but so you can look at it and go, okay, they know what they're doing or they don't know what they're doing. And if they don't know what they're doing, bing, right? A light goes off. Okay, maybe this is an opportunity. Let's see what the real data is. Let's see what the real opportunity is here. And so you're essentially doing these evaluations for people to say, okay, this is a good investment, right? Is that how you kind of look at it? Like, okay, good investment, okay investment, not good investment. You kind of have buckets that you kind of put those into? 100%. So when I'm doing an analysis and I'm putting together a screen record and I'm sending them out, um, I, I work more so in the city of San Diego. There's, I find there's more opportunity there. The legislation is, is more in the investor's uh, favor. You have more favorable ADU laws, favorable zoning. 
uh, favorable density. So what I'm doing is I'm going through, and, and the funny thing is a lot of this is public information. I'm going right on the San Diego City's website. I'm looking at the ZAP map, which is the portal that shows the different zoning codes, um, which I think is good to get into a little bit deeper on that. Yeah. Um, the zoning in San Diego City was actually changed back in the 70s. And so um, I'm sure you've, all, you've heard R1, R2, R3, sure. R4. There's actually no such thing in, in the city of San Diego. Really? You still find that uh, throughout the county and the other cities um, within San Diego County. But within San Diego City, there is no more. You have RS, uh, residential single family, and RM, residential multifamily, and there's different derivatives uh, that spread out from there. And then you have some mixed use as well. But for the m most part, it's just it starts from those two, RS, RM, and divvies out. And there's a lot of opportunity on an RM lot. Now again, you have to dive in deeper. You have to see what the overlays are, if it's in a transit priority area, because that's going to have to do with parking. Um, but when you get into an RM, you have a, a bunch of, a bunch of uh, favorable um, add-ons that you can do with density and with accessory dwelling units and and um, goes deeper from there. Yeah, I was going to say they did something recently, right, where they uh, essentially removed the parking requirement or something like that. It used to be you had to have a certain number of parking spaces per unit or something like that, and, and you don't have to have that anymore, right? Right. So that's, that's going to be for accessory dwelling units if you are in a, a TPA or a transit priority area. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so there's stuff like that that's, that's huge that could make a certain piece of property, a certain lot, worth a lot more money, right, to the right person if you know all those nuances. So I'll give you a great example. I'm, I'm in escrow right now. Um, I'm representing an investor where I sent him an RM lot and it was a very small subsection of San Diego City where the, the, all of the surrounding zoning is RS. This was particularly an RM. It was only a single family residence on an RM zone lot and the lot's approximately 20,000 square feet. Wow. So, and the listing agent from out of network, out of area, has no idea the value of the lot. We came in, we're in escrow at under under 600K, and the plan is to build 15 units on the lot. <laughs> <laughs> what, is a single family just gonna be trashed completely, or? Most likely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the, too valuable. The bones are still there. It is all the way on the front end of the lot, so that's something that we're still considering, but it's just stuff like that. I mean, it's, that's literally gold. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's mine. Oh, because that's, that's essentially half an acre, yeah. right? <laughs> half an acre in a multi-unit zoned area, that's a very valuable piece of property in the city of San Diego. And, and the funny thing is it's, there's opportunities like that everywhere. I can honestly say about 80% of what I see in the two to four unit space is either not labeled correctly or the inputs are not there at all. There's only about one third of the fields that we have to input as listing agents when we input a listing. Only about one third is mandatory. So just as you mentioned earlier, just I can get a really quick sneak peek. As soon as I, as soon as I pull up the MLS page, I know almost instantly, does this person know what they're doing? Do they, or do they not? Are they still labeling it R2, R3, R4? That's okay, <laughs> light, light bulb. I need to dive in deeper now. Yeah, so you're just scouring for these opportunities for people then. That is amazing. Now, as far as um, you know, you know, buying, let's say, your first multi-unit, which I, ha I have a buyer right now who's he's in the process of uh, doing a refinance, getting some cash out, and he wants to buy a multi-unit. He has a very specific area he's looking in, and you know, for him, it's going to be pretty easy. He makes a lot of money, he has a big down payment, um, but a lot of these buyers who are looking to buy multi-units, they could be investors, like I know you work with a lot. They could be, you know, uh, VA buyers that I work with a lot, or it could even be FHA buyers. Um, what's nice is the loan amount limits ratchet up, you know, as you add units right. for those conforming in FHA loan limits. And of course, with VA, we don't have a loan limit with full entitlement now. So a lot of people can buy as a primary, and they don't realize this, but you can buy a, a four unit property as a primary residence, as long as you're going to live in one of those units. And it's just like buying a, a, a regular house, uh, essentially. Uh, but you do get to count some rental income, which is helpful. And so a lot of people don't realize that. Do you encounter as much of it's that? As in, it's incredible. And that, to me, is, is one of, if not the best tools that someone has at their disposal. The VA loan on an owner-occupied situation, and even if it's not four units, it could be two, it could be three, it could be four. But get it, coming in with zero down, you're going to have some closing costs. You can use the rents to help. There's no limit, as you mentioned. You're going to have an incredible interest rate. There's no PMI. 
and you know you can get into a situation where you may you may um, have all of all of your mortgage covered you know it's just incredible way to start your portfolio yeah house hacking has become very huge I mean it's, it's nothing new it's been something that's been going on for a long time but be, having the ability to get in at a very low rate uh, into a two three or four unit situation on a 30-year uh, fixed it's you know and then decide what you want to do a year two or three later but that's an incredible piece of real estate just think about where we're at right now median sales price year over year we're at 15 percent yeah so this time last year median sales price is around 650 now it's about 747 so you just made a hundred thousand dollars in equity in one year just on appreciation which is just one portion of your return so multiply that now on a two three four unit with zero down it's essentially an infinite return so it's it's an incredible incredible tool yeah especially because you know you can buy that place <clears throat> uh, you know you can live there for a year and then if you want you can go ahead and you can refinance it free up your VA or you can leave the nice loan on it and just have it be an income property that makes you money forever I have a, a, a client who bought a four unit in Oakland and um, really 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 beautiful you know property really really cool uh, multi-unit property I actually have another client who almost bought uh, a uh, it was technically a five unit that's why we couldn't do it so mm. a two this is an interesting uh, FYI for you if you have a if you have ADUs with the VA loan they will consider those units so you can't have more than a total of four so if right. you have a technically a two unit and then three ADUs they call that five units and they won't do it and we went to the very highest realms of VA for that. So that one, that, he almost bought that one. But the, the four unit I'm speaking of, this guy was literally, he's oh, pretty much set for life, has VA disability, and now has this property. Well, if he ever decides to move out of that property, he will be cash flowing for himself enough money to do whatever he wants to do without having to work. Just from that one <laughs> property purchase. Isn't that crazy? It's incredible. That's just amazing to me that you can do that. And people you know, think, well, the prices are so high, you know, the value, the affordability. I don't know who you're talking to, but don't talk to me about that because I've seen too many things like that happen uh, where people are saying, well, I'm going to take and buy this at market value. In fact, he paid over market value for that mm. property or more over list price, over appraised value. He paid for that property. He had to because so many people want it. They knew the numbers. There's some savvy guys out there too, like you, who are advising people, hey, that's a great deal. Pay more, right. pay above, that's worth it, look at it. And he was in competition with those guys. Unfortunately, we were able to get that one for him, but I see it changing lives, man. Really, seriously, like the fastest way to a portfolio of doors, we always say doors, mm -hmm. back where I come from in Missouri, we call it doors, not units. <laughs> How many doors do you have? Um, here everybody talks about units. The fastest way to four doors is to buy a primary. Yep. For most yep. people. Yep, you're, again, you're able to leverage debt, come in with little money down, it's an incredible tool, especially if you if you want to start your portfolio, or again you can rinse and repeat when you go to move to the next next property. You can do it again, but you said something interesting is that you're that he had he paid extra, he paid over list, and prices are expensive right now. But again, that that's subjective. It's to someone that's coming from the Bay Area, from the Pacific Northwest, from Boston, New York, we're 15, 20 percent off, and if you look and read between the lines of what's happening with the economy that's booming and all of all of the tech that's coming in and the life sciences and um, and AI and again so it all goes back to three simple words supply and demand and economics 101 but it really tells the story is it did you spend too much or it, was it not a good deal if you spent too much to acquire the property I don't think so because again you have to take into consideration the appreciation you know I I tend to see and this is not an absolute but in general your cap rate and your appreciation are kind of on two opposite ends of the seesaw. Where you have a lot in one, the other's going to suffer. True. But you build wealth through equity, not necessarily income. Cash flow is absolutely important, but play to the strength of the market that you're investing in. San Diego has appreciation in spades. And if you look to see what, what's going on with all of these development projects, you have Manchester Pacific Gateway, two-thirds have got bought out by IQHQ real estate investment firm. You have Seventh and Market, East Village Green, Horton Plaza. Um, there's talk of Seaport Village, Chula Vista Bayfront Project, um, Gaslamp Promenade, uh, Riverwalk. There's a whole lot more. And that's just essentially in, in downtown outside of the uh, Chula Vista Bayfront Project. So there's a lot of tech that's coming in. 
San Diego is continuing to get younger, richer, more educated. So we see where it's going. I mean, I think that we are San Francisco 15 years ago. We are. That's exactly what we are. We are the seed of San Francisco um, uh, <laughs> from back in the day, you know, when it was booming. And that's why a lot of those companies are coming down here. The Idea District as well um, yep, in downtown exactly. is, yeah. a, is a, uh, a breeding ground for that type of yes. reality that you're talking about. The younger, wealthier, smarter, savvier individuals who are flocking to San Diego because the secret's out. Like, right. secret's out, dude. Like, San Diego's <laughs> yeah. not a secret anymore. Not the best kept secret anymore, It's not. It's not. We are out there, man. So true. International money coming in. Uh, people coming from all over the place. And the, really, the work from home movement has also been very beneficial for San Diego yep. and will continue to be for years to come. Max, this is great information, great stuff. Thank you so much for the insight. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, right? thanks for having me. Great to see you. Hey, share this with your friends. Let's help make them smarter than everyone else.